too. So this little contraption I think I got in my hand is called the mobility wall. At the Fit Expo, I was walking around and I saw um, this uh, like pretty much in a door jam. They had it just like hanging up, and I saw people rolling out on it. And I was like, you know, what, just let me let me try it. So they had it set up on a door jam just like this. And um, they had a different one though. They had a rumble roller. This is like a flat normal roller. And uh, I've been super big on mobility. If you guys been uh, watching, following me, I've been talking a lot about uh, my mobility and just like everything and uh, about how much it's helped me and uh, pretty much how like the mobility has been like, that's, it's, it's lacking my strength, like especially my adductors and my tight hips. And the cool thing about this thing is it makes it a lot, it makes it easier to like roll out and you can get better leverage, especially like in your adductors. Um, it's very hard to kind of like roll out your adductors, especially your hamstrings for me, like, I don't know, maybe because I got short arms, but like when I try foam rolling like this, I feel like I can't even like pick my legs up and I can't get like enough pressure on my hamstrings, especially behind my knees. So the dope thing about this thing is I can go right here, put my leg over it, say I want to get my adductors. I could put, I could like kind of like lean into this pad and put all the weight right there. And, all, and also you can like active release, meaning about like kicking your hamstrings out like that. But the best thing is just like the leverage you can put because on the ground, you just can't get the same pressure, especially like on your lats. My lats are also a really tight thing. So and I really like it for my, also even just for like your Achilles and your ankles. I have a hard, um, ankle mobility is huge. That's like the reason why people can't squat to death. So um, you can roll out your ankles and your calves just like this and it's easy. You're not like, like picking yourself up and just rolling out for a few seconds. You can like hang out here for a few minutes, roll up the calves. And like I said, even like active release. So right here on my hamstring, you can just hear it like crunch. And then from here, I could go like this, kick up, like this, kick up. This is the active release. And you could just feel like the tightness. They say pretty much when you feel like pain on the muscle, just hang out right there until it goes away and then like move to another spot until it goes away. And that's how you're gonna release it. So this is like my favorite for, like I said, any hard areas to reach. I even saw people um, doing it for like their traps and stuff. And it's really easy to just so loosen it up, slide it up. I'm gonna show you how I do my lats. So. It's super strong too, you can put a lot of weight on here. And so for your lats, you gotta lay down. So for this one, I put my weight on there. I'm too low, put a little too high, I'm, I'm short. So I gotta put a little bit lower. So easy to adjust, twist. So you go here, there you go. Now I can put all my weight on my lats and just roll out a lot comfortable because, man, I remember being younger, everyone just say, oh, roll out, roll out, man. I never took that shit serious and now I'm regretting it because I have so much tightness on my muscles and it's messing up my mobility and um just trying to get healthy again before i start a powerlifting prep competition because like i said i pulled 765 and i wasn't even training for anything um that's when i had my grand opening like two a year and a half ago and um my hips felt like best i had some guy working on me but he moved to sacramento oscar um so i don't have i haven't found anyone to break up my tissues like that and at the end of the day you can't count on other people like massage therapists to do it for you you need to like figure out how to do it for yourself um it's good to go see like people like that but if you, you can do it yourself it's going to be better because it's just like gaining strength you can't get jacked instantly or put on strength instantly at the end of the day it takes consistent hard work so same thing with mobility you can't just get mobile in one day you can mobilize for 10 12 hours the next day you're gonna wake up you're gonna wake up the around the same you're not gonna be instantly mobile so this is just a consistent thing so um i've been trying to do rolling out minimum 30 minutes to four, an hour in the morning and at night and then even before i work out so it's honestly like three times a day so um like i said those are the my top two ones i like using on here i saw people put it higher you could like put it on your traps and all that stuff but um we're gonna go to my next roller and it's the rumble roller i bought it off myself off amazon and they have the same option on mobility while they just they ran out when i got there so they're only able to send me this one but um, this thing still works wonders. But if you have like a lot of knots like me, the little rumble roller has these knobs and um, it really like gets in there. So we're gonna go to the rumble roller next. All right guys, so this is the rumble roller, extra firm, meaning like these things are super hard. Um, the guy that worked on me, he told me to get this because it's like, it'd be a good way to release my muscles. A flat one is just not enough. I need someone like, it honestly feels like someone's digging their, their thumb into you. So I'm really tight in my hips right here, my outer glutes, because I've always been, um, I've been doing sumo since I've powerlifting since I was 17. Um, my powerlifting coach would say knees out, knees out. So I'm targeting a lot of my outer quads, my adductors and my, um, my outer glutes. I think they're glute mead. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. And um, pretty much like 
A, mu a muscle, the way it works is it needs to contract, meaning it needs to be like relaxed. A tight muscle like this can't contract. It need, it's just no way. So if it can't contract, that means you're not using your full potential, your full muscle's potential. So you need to have, your muscles should feel like soft. Like my chest right now is always pretty soft um, because like I, I don't even roll out my picks. I don't know how, they just stay pretty good. Um, I mean, sometimes I roll them out. I've been rolling them out with this thing, but my glutes honestly feel like freaking, there's rocks in there. They're called adhesions where they're like little, there's legit like little bumps. Like it's basically your muscles are all knotted up. So um, the best position for me right here, you obviously can use this on your back and all that, but my back is not, it's not like, a, I mean, obviously it's tight, but it's not like, um, like super tight where it's hurting me. It's like um, where I feel like the restriction, I feel restricted in my glutes and the mobility. So um, I would just like get on the roller and just like roll out on it. But it was game changer when my friend told me to go to sit to my hip and then with this leg go right here. So all the weight is on the side of my IT band, my glute, and all you're gonna do is just when you find that spot where it kind of just hurts, you just gotta hang out. And the biggest thing is like, this shit's boring, it's not fun, and you just gotta breathe through it. So like, in through your nose, out through your mouth. You don't wanna breathe through your diaphragm, think about breathing through your stomach. And just slowly, like you can tell, I'm slowly letting it roll up, and you can just, it hurts, honestly, like this shit is so painful. And the more you do it, the less painful it'll get. And so now I'm on like my QL, my back area, and now I'm gonna roll up to my lats. And like I said, these little things are like little thumbs. It's like going to my serratus right now. And you just gotta relax, that's the hardest thing. People get on these things and you can tell who rolls out or not because they'll restrict their breathing like that. You wanna breathe, let, let your lats open up. Let everything open up. So my left side is like my good side. It's um, it's more dominant. So it like at the end of the day, it doesn't have any much. It doesn't have as much knot. So it rolls out super easy. My right side is stubborn. That's the side that's giving me problems. So like my right hip, my right lat, my right shoulder. It's all tied into the same thing. So um, it's taken me years to figure this out. I've had this imbalance for a long time, but now I'm figuring out like why it's happening, like and all this stuff. So. I'm just learning as I go and like, I'm no like, I don't know, I didn't go to school for this. I'm not a, what is it called? Uh, um, what is it called when you have a major in biomechanics? That's like the way the body moves. Um, I don't know anything about biomechanics, but I've just been in the game for a long time and know about lifting and talk to a lot of chiropractors. And at the end of the day, like I said, my muscles just need to be relaxed and loose so they can fire at their full potential. My left side, gets like that pretty easy but now it's compensating so now my left side is even more tighter than my right side so that's why i took two weeks off my competition just to focus on rolling out and then same thing when you get on that thing like i said now i'm gonna go to my quads think about like active releasing so all i'm doing is kicking my leg to my butt and i could just feel the tightness in my muscle and then when i extend it out it releases right here it's tight it releases i remember I, I asked john hack like three years ago um you know, John Hack, he's one of the strongest in the world at 181. He's like number two right now. He was number one. Um, he, he had like two quad surgeries. I, I competed at the US Open with him. One year he blew the other knee and the, I mean, tore the other quad and the next year tore the other quad. And I saw him in Miami at a deadlift competition. And I was like, hey bro, like how'd you come back from that? And he's like, honestly, it's gonna sound like fucking, I don't know if he said token, but he said like, this sounds like weird, but just foam rolling and doing this active release. That's what he told me. Like, he's like, believe it or not, I just had a foam roll. Like I never used to foam roll. So his quads were hella tight. And same with me, man. I never used to foam roll, never used to do this stuff. I would do it for like 13 seconds or, you know, a minute. But now I'm semit, I'm spending, before I even work out, I'm spending like 45 minutes on this thing, getting my hips loosened up and you'll feel it. Like you'll feel way more stronger, especially if like, you've been training for years and you don't have, and you just, you're just tight and locked up. So try this rumble roll roller out. Um, I think it was like 60 bucks on Amazon. It'd be a great investment. And today we're gonna hit some squats. I'm gonna keep it light, just focusing on technique. I don't want my glutes to get um, tight again. So I'm just gonna keep it light. We'll see how I feel today. Favorite one for the glute right here. 
Take a good stretch. I'm still gonna roll it out. Like I said, you wanna go slow when you do this. You'll feel it way more. I just, like I said, I just go, all right, I rolled out more of the, I just wanna go slow. Feel where those, those trigger points are, where the tightness is. You're gonna get to your lower back right here. On one side, all that weight. So like your QL, which is like, basically I would say like the side of your back if you're not uh, good with the scientific terms. And you gotta just play on it, man. Like we're all tight in um, different areas. We all are different, like our limbs are different, our bodies are different. So, so you might, your glutes might not be tight at all, but like your back might be super tight. So you gotta figure out, you know, what works for you on this thing. Tyson, get out the way. Tyson's trying to always get up in my videos. He's like, I'm the real pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> gonna take all my shine. Oh, huh, Tyson. You trying to take all the shine? Yeah? You trying to take all the shine? You name Pitbull? Pitbull? Sit. Oh, boy. Get so close to my face. When you have dogs, you can't roll out, bro. They just want, they just mess everything up. They try to be next to you all the time. Look at these guys. Try to make them roll out. Let me roll you out. Feel good? He gets scared of the foam roller. <laughs> Look at roll you up, Papa. There you go. See how snow. Good girl. <laughs> Don't want to scare him with it. But yeah, so I'm telling you, this is the most basic thing. It's just like when people tell you, um, how do you get shredded or how do you look good, you know, get lean muscle. Chicken and rice, steak and rice. It's like they're lying to you. The stuff we hear that's like simple or like that's out there that you got to go do, we don't want to do it. But if it was like a pill, oh, take this pill before you work out, you're loosening your muscles. Everyone would buy that shit. Just cause it's easier, the hearts, this is like, just rolling out, when I get a client all the time, I'd be like, have you rolled out? They'd be like, yeah, and then I tell them, and they're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like they've never rolled out. If you never rolled out, it's just a workout. Like you gotta pick yourself up, you gotta move around. That's like, honestly, like half the workout for when people first come in, they're like, man, I'm sweating just from rolling out. And like the whole point of like, um, health and whatever you want to your fitness goals are at the end of the day you just need to move around like if you guys work a nine to five you're just sitting all day you think you're active but like every day like your daily routine um your uh, i would say like your your uh your activity level probably goes down if you're not consistently working out. So adding this into your workout, even if you don't work out, it's more movement. You I swear, you'll get some type of um, benefit or like your heart rate gonna go up. So um, even if you guys are not like big lifters, you're just tight or you're like older, you haven't really worked on like mobilization. I'm telling you, invest in a foam roller. It'll be the best thing like you've ever done. I've had I just had some guy message me on my last video said, "Hey Pitt, thanks for mentioning the rolling out videos and all this stuff because I just hit like a new PR on squats today." Like, 555 he said so it's it's cool seeing that because now I'm, and these are the videos i'm always like iffy if i should do because i'm like do people really want to know about this because everybody just wants to see like you know big weight lifted or some cloud stuff or like entertainment but like honestly i'm on, here on youtube to help educate because i help I, I get a lot of people that say you know the bench technique help them and all the, all these little technique things i give out there people say how much it helps them so if i could help you out on mobility at a younger age um and like how i was like i never focused on it I'm telling you, it, it will make the world of difference and you won't be getting hurt anymore. So make sure you roll out before and after. All right guys, so after you, um, you do the roller, if you don't, this is the, my favorite thing to do before I squat and deadlift because it gets a lot of blood into my quads. Um, a lot of power lifters, you know, even when I first started, um, I used to train with bodybuilders and they would be like, do leg extension before squats. I'm like, why the hell would I do that? Like my legs would be all pumped and I would be squatting and felt all weird. But um, it's called pre-exhaustion. You actually want to get blood into your muscles before you start squatting. Um, so you actually have more endurance and honestly just feels a lot better. It's like you're warming your car up. You're getting the fluids nice and warm. Same thing for this. So um, sled drag is my favorite. And make sure you're getting that, just think about walking backwards, getting that knee over your behind, behind your toe. Don't just lean back and put your feet like this. Make sure you're taking that step back. Take a step back. Take a step back. Getting that knee over your toe. Rush a lot of new blood into that VMO to your drop quad area before I start squatting. So that feels good. 
like I was talking about how I have such a bad imbalance, it's very hard for me to feel my right leg while I'm squatting. So when I do this, I already get blood in my leg before I start squatting, so it feels evenly as I go down and up. This was the first thing I did when I hurt my knee. It was like the first thing I could do without any pain. It just felt good. And you might need to start with just the sled. I get a lot of my clients and I put like the 60 pound uh, sandbag and it's too heavy. The sled's already pretty heavy so you don't need to load a lot of weight. So make sure you're getting the reps in with that knee from behind the toe. Really working the knees over toes, baby. I went to Mark Bell's gym and they were all doing this too because they had Ben Patrick, AKA the knees over toe guy at the, at the gym in the podcast. So he was just talking about the benefits of dragging the sled. And that's what they be doing over there. I even saw Andre Milanichev, one of the best powerlifters of all time. He's definitely one of the best squatters of all time. Squatted over a thousand pounds just in wraps. I think he's done 1100 in wraps. That's super heavyweight. He's in the, he was there, he's from Russia, I guess he moved to SAC. And the first thing he does, he's in there dragging a sled. And it's cool to see because he used to be like a super heavy big guy. And you can tell he's a lot leaner. And now he's probably just trying to you know, work on his physical health. He ain't trying to lift all the weight no more. He already proved that. So he's just trying to live a better life. And um, a lot of times these power lifters, you know, they're body big, they want to be big forever, but that's, that's a, uh, you're gonna live a short life if you wanna be big forever because your body's not meant to be over 300 pounds like these guys are. So, um, you know, just li this lo longevity health. That's all I'm about. I plan on lifting heavy, powerlifting for a very long time because I've been doing this with perfect, with not perfect technique, but good technique since I was 17. Not the best, but at least I had some type of guidance. So, um, doing just years of maintenance, uh, doing years of life. Work that I've never done before, like the rolling out. I just used to train, go home, sleep, do the same thing again. But now I have to, you know, roll out. It's been, I haven't even started working out. I've been here for like over an hour. So now I'm barely about to start working out. I got my quads pumped up. Look how much bigger my left one is. It even just feels like weak when I lock both my, le my, my knees out. You can see the contraction in the left one is a lot better because I'm just having a hard time feeling this. Like, I just have a, like a, I don't know, like a dull pain in my knee. And I was talking to my homie when I went to super training gym, Oscar. He thinks it's coming from my tibialis because it's really tight. And I think so too, because my knee only started hurting when I took those fucking pictures with Mookie playing basketball from jumping. I should have not fucking been playing basketball. They wanted to do like a horse game and just running around in these high top shoes. Um, and those high top shoes, those fucking blazers, don't buy those shits, those shits are gay as fuck. Um, all these fitness people be wearing them, I wore them. I wore back, I just like feel my, my foot is smashed in there. Like it's a, it's a really narrow shoe. So I think playing basketball and having my toes like very tight, it just got my whole foot tight in my ankle. And it's, I had to compete like that with a lot of pain in my knee. And um, it's still like that. And I just think it's coming from my tibialis. I've been rolling it out, trying to break it up, but it's still kind of bothering me. So I just need to work on my ankle mobility. I know it's gonna help because that was how I got back last time. I just focused on, on ankle mobility and boom, my knee wasn't hurting no more. So just gotta keep on practicing it. But today we're gonna see how I can squat. I haven't squatted in, since my competition. So I'm just hoping today to squat pain free. I'm not trying to do anything heavy, just get some reps in. Squats ain't happening today. Can't even squat my body weight without my right knee really hurting. Um, just gotta build back up that ligament strength. So um, for beginners, I want you guys to start on a 45 pound rubber plate like this. And this is for like assistance if you need to. I don't really need it, but I'm just gonna grab it for you guys. You can, all I want you to think about is pushing that knee forward. The opposite heel will come back up and push up from there. Here, here, making sure 
you're keeping that heel down. Think about your knee driving over your toe. Come back up. It's even good to pause it at the bottom. Come back up. You can just see just a short range of motion. Look at my legs already starting to shake. That's how weak my right leg is. Watch what I do it from this leg. No, no shaking whatsoever. Like I can even like elevate it. No shaking. A little bit of shaking. But this one's like, like if I go to here to do it, you can see, look at those muscle fibers in there. Just twitching. So that's how much weaker my leg is. So you, you um, knees over toe, Ben Patrick told, told me to do it off a 45 plate so I could judge how much I'm progressing. So I've already done a plate, so let's add a, let's add a, I think I've done 25. Let's see if I can do, uh, fuck it, we'll try 45. A whole nother 45. Start with the weak leg forward. See, look, I can't even go all the way down, so it's too high. I need to start with like a 25 or 15. So, 15 and a 10. Right leg. Think about my knee going forward. Heel touch the ground, come back up. Forward, come back up. Here. Make sure you're keeping that heel down. 15 reps, this should be burning. crazy how much different it feels in my right leg to my left leg that's why i know i'm just like i'm, I'm lacking so much strength on my squat because a i can't even fucking squat pain free right now and i still squat at 600 two weeks ago on a bad knee so once i get this knee right it's gonna be good but i just need to continue continuously do these ones um these step downs are feel a lot better than the atg split squats the atg split squats are these ones right here where you're just thinking almost the same thing knee going forward Stretching it out, come back up, and forward, come back up. That one honestly kind of hurts my knee to make it a little bit easier on those ones. If that hurts your knee, you need to go to the same thing. Go to elevated thing. Now go into it, it's gonna be less stress on that knee. Come back up. And then now opposite slowly go down in weight. So the lower it is, the easier it is for you. So if that feels too easy, remove the leg. Here now, down, back up. This is what I first did when I got my knee back and then I still stopped doing them and that's why my knee started hurting again. It seemed to be a consistent thing. These ones you wanna pause at the bottom, let the opposite flexor stretch, come back up. Pause at the bottom, make sure that heel's down, come back up. I really like these ones too because you get a really good stretch in your opposite hip flexor. God, man. These are the most boringest workouts. You're not doing any weight, but it's the most beneficial stuff no one really shows, but watch. Once I get a big squat, people are gonna go back to my YouTube and scroll like, what did he do? I already got a lot of people coming to me that have knee problems. I'll help a few people out. I have like torn meniscus, dislocated kneecaps, and I've gotten back squatting within under three months, and they're doing like the most weight they've ever done. So um, now I just gotta do it for me. I just gotta be consistent. This is my first week back into training. So I'm gonna do be doing these. I would recommend three times a week. I'm gonna hit up Ben Patrick, knees over toe to make sure I, if that's enough or if I should be doing more or less. But the biggest thing, he says you could be doing these every day, but you don't need to like push yourself. You don't wanna push yourself through pain. You just wanna 
gradually increase it, but you don't want to be pushing yourself through pain. So when I'm doing these, I'm not really going through pain. I'm just going through discomfort, I would say. So back to these, these are called Paul Quinn step ups. I guess Paul Quinn is like some famous dude in the Olympics that trained a bunch of athletes um, that got hurt and came back and won gold medals. So um, he's a really good guy, I guess, but these are called Paul Quinn step ups. Let's try to do it without, this is the one, this is my bad leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. Four, three, two, one. Boom. It's all good. Honestly, it's a little bit easier probably because you're getting more blood in there, getting a little bit more stronger. Now the good thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So like I said, you want to be doing high reps with this, um, anywhere from 15 to 20 reps, three to four sets. Three weeks, uh, yeah, going on through almost three weeks ago, I've competed and um, I haven't been doing my uh, rehab knee exercises. So now I'm starting back with a 45 a pound plate. I think that's about maybe three inches. So I'm gonna put the opposite leg back. And all I'm thinking right here, I'm thinking about driving that knee forward. A lot of people just go straight down. Think about that knee going straight forward and it's really stretching out all the ligaments right here. And like I said, it also stretches your opposite hip flexor and then push back. Sit down into it. Knee going forward, keeping that heel down because your heel, your, your heel's gonna wanna go up. Keep that heel down, come up. And slowly you can start adding some weight to some dumbbells. I already feel a lot of pain on my knee, so I'm not using any weight, just doing body weight. Making sure I'm getting a good stretch. Like I said, you don't wanna go through pain. You just wanna make sure you're stretching everything out. Pause at the bottom. Hurts. This leg, I feel no pressure on my knee, but I feel a crazy stretch in this opposite hip flexor. Back, forward. Keep your chest up, shoulders square. Back up. This is burning my quad. I'm only at rep three, four, pause, five, six, seven, ah. eight, nine, ten. It's crazy oh, how much I feel like the burn in my left leg because I have way more activation in my left leg. I could barely even feel like blood flow, but my left leg, I did 10 reps and feel like I'm gonna like, I don't know, cramp up, but it's just because there's no activation in my right leg. So when I'm doing this, my right leg, it's more my ligament is getting the workout than my muscle. So um, 
like I said, if you have a hard time, if these hurt from the ground to here, and it feels like your knee's hurting, ow, come up to here and make it a lot less strain on your knee. I got second set. After that first, it kind of hurt, and then I did it again. It felt honestly too easy. It felt like I needed to grab some weight to push my um, my body weight down. So now, when just we're adding a 40 pounds, same thing. Think about that right knee going straight forward. Now I have 40 pounds to keep my heel down and drive my knee over my toe, keep my chest up, shoulders square, push back. Pause at the bottom, end grain of motion, come back up. Pause, come back up. Look how much I'm shaking. Four. good leg feels so much more different it's like completely pain-free I just feel a lot of blood rush into my quad it was good honestly my right side just feels like just discomfort a little bit <sighs> pause come back up it's all the way down pause Come back up, two more. Pause. <sighs> these workouts are just so humbling, man. I'm telling you, like, these are the ones that no one wants to do because you're doing no weight, not going heavy, it's boring, but this stuff that pays off no longer. All right, guys, just finished up the workout. Um, we did sled drags to get the blood in the knee. Obviously, we, did, we rolled out before, about to roll out now. Then we did the plug and step ups, did the HG split squats, and my knees are already feeling that like achy, so I'm gonna just cut it off today. Um, I'm gonna be doing these three times a week. Today's Monday, so I'm gonna do this again on Wednesday and again on Friday. And um, I just, I'm not gonna start training hard again until I can get this right leg um, mobile enough where I can have the same exact mobility so I can strengthen up this leg because my left leg is just way stronger and it's doing way more work, so I'm honestly, like overworking my left leg. So if, if I don't keep, if I don't fix this, I'm gonna hurt my left leg. So I need to work on this imbalance. Same with my, my right lat, it's all my whole right side. So uh, I'm still gonna be doing that. Um, even for bench press, I'm gonna bench tomorrow. And I just gotta go a lot lighter so I could use my back more because my chest and shoulders wanna compensate. So tomorrow will be another light day and just focusing on technique. So um, all you guys that wanna get stronger and stuff, you seriously have to take a step back to realize you need to focus on technique and form and the little things to get stronger. So even for me at my level, um, you know, I can bench over, I did like 429 or 430 at the competition. I'm only, only benching 225 for reps just to practice on my technique. So um, you guys gotta humble yourself and you know, put your ego aside and really just take a step back and focus on technique and I promise you the weight will go up. So hope you guys like this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later.